Dissociative disorders are really interesting. And in clinical psychology, I've got a colleague, Dr. Ellis, and he says it in a way that makes me think, I, I like the way he says it. He's, he talks about clinical psychologists as having this really odd interest. On the one hand, we see people suffering, and we have great compassion for that. And on this shoulder, we have this sense of, wow, that's terrible. I'm sorry you're suffering through that. What can I do to help? And on the other side, you're like, wow, that's interesting. That is really interesting because it's so unusual. I'm curious. I'm intellectually curious. I want to know more about it. Well, dissociation is something all of us sometimes experience, but usually in small bouts and sometimes disturbing, sometimes not disturbing. Um, you know, you have these little experiences, you're like, that was weird, but you don't make anything of it, and it doesn't persist, and you let it go. But for other people, dissociation, meaning a detachment of one's consciousness or sense of identity from one's experience, um, becomes problematic. It disrupts their life because their memory is disrupted, or their sense of identity is disrupted, or their sense of connection to reality is disrupted. Not in such a way that's so profound that it reaches levels of schizophrenia. We'll see that there's specific criteria for schizophrenia. And I worked with a patient once that had a dissociative disorder, and his experience was not always dissociative, but for long periods of time, he would feel like he's walking through a dream. And he couldn't convince himself that he wasn't in a dream. Like the reality you and I are living right now and might agree we're sharing for him, being a shy person, he wasn't sure he wasn't dreaming right now. Right? And so we talked about ways that he could reassure himself that he was in a waking state of consciousness because it just seemed dreamlike to him. It didn't seem as concrete as most of us experience waking reality. Dream reality, to me, is an alternate reality. I mean, if you're in dream state, for example, does that not feel really real? Until you wake up and go, oh, wow, that was just a dream. But in the moment that you were in it, you ever had that thing where you're drifting off and all of a sudden you fall and you, your whole body jumps? Yes. Yes. That's because your body's reacting to the thought as though it was a real actual occurrence, right? It's automatically responding to the fall or the trip or whatever, even though you're laying down. So that experience inside your mind is so potently real that your body's responding to it, but usually you're in a deep sleep and your body doesn't respond to your dreams. But you wake up, most people can clearly distinguish between their sleeping reality or dreaming quote unquote reality and their waking reality, which is the one we all share together. We've already talked about dissociative fugue. We talked about it in the memory chapter, so you should already be familiar with that term. Losing memory from personal identity that is way too extensive to be attributed to any natural process. It's not due to a substance abuse or something like that. And the person oftentimes will have unexpected travel from home. They just leave. They don't remember who they are. They don't remember where they live, and they wander off and sometimes start new identities which then form as cohesive as prior identities, or seem to at least, and sometimes they come out of it in days or weeks or months, and sometimes not for years, and sometimes they don't come out of it, it seems. It's very rare, but it's very interesting when it happens. It's not fraud. If you go and say, oh gosh, I owe somebody a lot of money, or I'm going to go to jail, or I have to go into military service, and I'm trying to avoid that, and I fake my own death and go start a new identity, that's not dissociative fugue. That's fraud, right? That's a motivated, calculated behavior designed to achieve an outcome. For this set of circumstances, the person seems to just snap out of who they were and not really connect with that prior identity. Most people have also heard of multiple personality disorder, but we don't call it that anymore. Call it dissociative identity disorder, where the person does have multiple distinct personalities that take over control of their conscious existence alternately throughout the day or week. There's no real predicting when it will come or go. You've seen the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde stories done time and again and all kinds of dramas, uh, but it is that dramatic. Somebody becomes somebody else. And for those around them, it's very disconcerting. Never treated anybody with this. It's also exceedingly rare, but I watched somebody in a session be treated who had this, and he had multiple personalities that he exhibited. He exhibited three different ones inside the hour that I watched, and they flipped into whole different 
persons, almost like character acting, right? Almost like if you were an actor, you're just changing roles, changing roles. He had a female personality, male personalities, younger personalities, older personalities, but they were different and they may or may not be aware of one another, which is the dissociation, not connected, not integrated. This is rare, but one thing that does seem common to the development is severe abuse in childhood. Severe emotional, <coughs> physical, or sexual abuse seems to be a common thread in people who suffer from this. Where we look at all of us, and we all have different personalities we exhibit in different situations. I'll go on stage and be very different than I would be at a dinner table with my grandparents, right? So not that I'm a different person, I just engage in different actions that if you saw me at those two different times would look like very different manifestations of personality, but are really integrated in choices I make. Here, there's seemingly a lack of integration, that it just goes from one to another and the person doesn't seem aware of the change and thus is not able to control it, and it can be very detrimental to their, to their lives, obviously.